Hey everyone, Melanie Menschinger here, illustrator for Gina K Designs. Today I'm going to be sharing a project with you with my newest set from Gina K Designs, Beautiful Backyard, and this comes out on March 28th at 7 p.m. Central. I hope you'll join us for our Facebook Live party and our Gina K Designs and Stamp TV friends group. But I'm so excited to share this set with you and just to continue the beautiful series. Um, these are more illustrations that I've done with different backyard elements. So we've got butterflies, a hummingbird, lots of little caterpillars pillars and inchworms, some snails, and then some grass, flowers, and some little toadstools that are going to be great for creating beautiful scenes that are going to be reminiscent for the backyard, perfect for spring and summer. So today's project, I'm going to show you how to make this hummingbird card, and I'm going to show you some variations on it, but pretty simple and minimal tools and supplies that we're going to do for this card. In addition to the beautiful backyard set, you're going to be using the dies. If you don't have the dies to go with the set, or if we run out early, hopefully not, you can just use a pair of scissors for your dimensional objects. These items are pretty big, and so they're not too hard to cut out. You're also going to want something to stamp with, so I have got the mini Misty here, or you can use some acrylic blocks. I believe the largest one the butterfly and the um, hummingbird will both fit on a two and a half inch block. I'm going to be using some different markers today for coloring. So I grabbed some Spectrum Noir markers. I've got some reds, some greens, and then a gray here. So I've got the DR1 and DR4. For the hummingbird, I've got the BG5 and then the CG2 and JG1. There are so many ways to color this hummingbird. There are over 300 varieties, so just Google and have fun making them whatever color you want to fit into your color scheme. The ink pads I'm using today, I've got the Gina K Designs Obsidian Amalgam for stamping out those images and the greeting. And then I'm going to do a little stenciling today. So you could also use the um, toadstools or the grass, if you have something that's a little bit lower down, but since this is in the sky, you're gonna wanna use a blending brush and either do maybe a sunset or a sunrise or some clouds. I'll show you another one that I did using the butterfly and caterpillars with a blue background. But today I'm going to use the sweet mango and the wild dandelion. I recommend that you always have two colors for these stencils because it just really adds a lot of depth. And then I'm going to be using the Gina K Designs Sunshine Stencil. I've got some of her Connect Glue here, and then I've also got some of the foam squares for popping up that hummingbird, or you can use some of the Action Wobbles. So this is a little bit larger than the hummingbird or the butterfly, which both lend themselves really well to creating some action on your card, but it is slightly bigger than each of these images because I turned it in before we started using these. Now that I have these in hand, I'm gonna show you how you can modify it by using a pair of more heavy duty scissors. This is a pair of Cutco scissors, or if you have a thicker pair of kitchen shears, that'll work really well for cutting through that thin plastic layer. I think that's everything I'm using today. Maybe some little embellishments like some of the rhinestones or some of the little rainbow hearts if you wanna add a little embellishment. But let's go ahead and get started. Oh, if you're using the die cutting, you're also going to need some kind of die cutting machine. So I've got the cuddle bug and then I have got the base plate B and C plate for creating the sandwich. I've already die cut my pieces. I guess I forgot to mention, here's the paper that we're using. So I've got some Gina K white cardstock here. I've got a heavy base weight cardstock for a nice thick base. So that's gonna um, really give it a lot of structure, my card, and it's nice and thick. So it feels very luxurious and professional, pure luxury. And this is four and a quarter by 11 inches scored at five and a half. So if you have a little scoring tool or a score buddy, that's around here somewhere. So that's gonna be my base. Then I have got a layer for doing my stamping and stenciling on. This is three and three quarters by five inches. And we're gonna just pop that up with our foam squares. And then you're gonna have another piece of the layering weight cardstock for cutting out these different images. So I went ahead and cut out a butterfly just so that you can see that you could do another layout if you didn't want to use the bird because these are both pollinators that work really well with that flower. So I'm gonna use this piece that is left over from my die cut to put in my Misty here. And this is going to help me 
get those images stamped and positioned. So turn it over this way because that hummingbird is facing that way. And then I'm going to take my images and I'm going to line them up over those openings and then I'll have perfect positioning for the image if I need to stamp it again and again. So refer to one of my other videos. I can link it um, if you want to see some of the die cutting, but I already did these just to make a faster video today. All right. Okay, so we're going to just close the door and then we're going to just put our images in. I'll use this one on another card. Really simple coloring today though. So I'm going to take my obsidian ink here, put these pieces out of the way so I don't get any ink on it. And you can you can ink it up and close the door left to right or right to left. I sometimes I do it the other way. Kind of just depends on just what I what I have handy and how I set it down on my workspace. But you might find if you're right or left-handed, one is easier than the other. All right. So I'm going to just press all over. Get all those details. Now this butterfly, the one that I drew it from, I forgot what the species is, but it looks mostly black and then there are different colors that you can add in that stripe. But you could also stamp this butterfly in primary colors or pastels or whatever you want. So a lot of different ways to do that. So let's pull these out and see if I need to do one more time. So I think I want that a little bit darker. And I think I need to re-ink my pad. So let's do this one more time. So just make sure it's lined up. Put them right back in the little opening. We'll do it one more time. These stamps are very new, so they're still very sticky. So that's why I had to peel them off the image. So let's ink this up one more time. And I kind of look in the light to make sure that it looks inky and wet all across the stamp. I kind of twist it a little bit, just barely, not to rough up the surface of the pad, but just to get in those little cracks and keep it from having lines. So I'm going to do this one more time. All over. And you could stamp your flowers directly onto the mat, but then you don't have to do any kind of masking or stencil around it. Okay, so there we go. That's nice and dark. Same for the hummingbird. And it tends to fade just a little bit as it dries. So I'm going to pull this out now. And we're going to stamp our greeting on last because I don't want to move around my ink from my greeting with my stenciling. So let's take this layer now and we're going to stencil this. So I like to have the sun, the middle of this, a little bit off center rather than right in the middle. Okay, so kind of doing a rule of thirds. So I'm going to put it right up here and it's going to be just the perfect little spotlight for that hummingbird. So I'm going to take first, I like to start with the lighter color, so I'm going to go in with my yellow and I'm just going to swirl that around there and I'm going to focus on the outer portion of that sun and keep the middle lighter and that's going to make it look brighter. If you look at a sunrise or a sunset, the very middle and brightest part of the sun just looks white hot. Okay, all right, not pretty just by itself, but now let's go on and line it up again 
and I just want to add just a little bit of orange. So if you have several blending brushes, and I think I had two different ones that I was using. Where did it go? My orange. Here we go. All right, so I want to line this up. There's the yellow. So now I kind of wish I hadn't pulled it away. There we go. So now it's lined up there. Whoop. Okay, so when you see the stencil disappear, that's when you've got it. So I just want to use just a little bit here again just around a little part of that and I'm not going all the way to the edge I really like it to be just kind of a soft blend out to the corners of the mat rather than solid so you can see here is the first one that I did so they're just a little bit different this one's a little bit darker yellow however you want to do it and then we're gonna just place our images on here to see where we want to stamp that greeting. So I'm going to peel these off. And before I used I'm here for you, but I have a lot of different ones you could use the butter with the butterflies with. One of the greetings in here I have from a set that was retired that I just love so much to go with the caterpillar and the butterfly and that was what the caterpillar calls the end of the world the master calls a butterfly and that is just so wonderful for thinking about new beginnings or scary changes or maybe the loss of a loved one you know that the end is not the end and then I've got another one in here if nothing ever changed there would be no butterflies so that's another one I love to use with those two images so I'm gonna go ahead though and I'm gonna use I think I'm here for you I've also got a I love or I miss hanging out with you, and I think that's really kind of fun to use with the hummingbird since they're able to just hover there in midair. So I'm going to move this, and I'm going to put this in the corner here. And I want this to go right about there. Okay. I'm going to move these. I don't want to get any ink on those images. One more time. Okay. And we're going to pop up this layer with some foam squares onto our base. So I'm going to take four. And if you find if you're putting some really heavy elements in the middle, you know, you might want to pop up the middle of this layer, but I don't. I normally do not. I just try to be as minimal as possible to conserve my supplies. And I just realized I was thinking that I might try this one landscape style just so that you could see, but I've already put my greeting on there. But I'll, I'll flip it around and just kind of show you that you could already also do this layout with the greeting up here. So I forgot that I was going to do that next time. Okay, all right, so let me make sure that this is kind of the bottom of it when I folded it. It wasn't quite lined up. All right, so put that right there in the middle. All right, so let's go ahead and do a little coloring on these images. So I'm going to start with the lighter red on here, and I'm just going to go in and swirl it around. So I love to use alcohol markers because they are so great for blending and for a really saturated color and for not having any lines. And so you just swirl it around so that you're going in circles and you're not creating those lines where it's overlapping when you're coloring. Okay, a nice bright red. And then I'm going to take this deeper red. I'm just going to put, oh, actually, this one is not deeper red. I'm going to do the DR6, actually. I think that DR1 was a little bit darker than I realized. Okay, so I will modify this in the list. 
So what I'm doing is I'm putting this in the middle of those flowers. And if you want these to glow even more, I would have chosen just a slightly lighter red for the lighter parts of that flower. And now let's do the green. So I'm going to put this really pale springy green underneath. Those might be, might be different colors than I used before. And then I'm going to take this darker green and just put that on the undersides of these leaves. And then I'm going to do the same on the hummingbird here. So what I want to do is I'm going to use the lighter green putting that all over the wing and the body and then I like to use a couple different colors to kind of make it shimmery and iridescent. I hope you can see my coloring well enough from this angle. I've asked before if people like to see the whole work surface so they can see all the supplies in the shot or if they like it a little bit closer closer you get to see a little bit more detail in the coloring. Okay. And then I'm going to take my BG5 and this is going to add just a little bit of gray to the wings. And I don't know the name of this particular hummingbird, but it looks like one that comes by my house. So I'm just going over some of these areas. And then I also used, just to show you this, I must have had a darker, let's see, it's a little more down here. I think I had a blue one before, so I might grab a blue marker just to add, because they have that shimmery, iridescent look. way to color these though. Just recommend, I'm going to put just a little bit of dark here to make the eye pop out some more. And then a little bit of red just right here. And that kind of ties it into the flowers. Okay. You can also take a white pen if in your coloring you kind of lost the little highlight there or maybe like with your stamping. So I'm just putting in just a little white dot over where it is in the illustration. And that just gives it just a little bit of light in the eye. You could put that into the middle too of these little flowers if you want. Let me try to get the white going on here. There it is. Kind of like that in the center. Okay, so let's go ahead and pop these elements up. So I'm going to actually put this just on flat because I'm going to make this little element float. So if you don't have the action wobbles, they are $4.95 each and you get five in a pack. So just under a dollar each. So worth it because look what you can do with that action wobble. Isn't that fun? So it's very easy to adhere. So it has sticky adhesive on the front and the back. It's just a little plastic spring, very thin plastic. The soft side is going to go onto your image. The thicker one is going to go onto your cardstock. So what you can do is you can just lay your die cut on there and cut around it or trace around it and then cut. Or you can take that die cut image and you can go in and you can find the largest part of it so you have to do the least amount of cutting. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a pen and like 
this, this, this. Okay. All right. So I'm going to do just a very simple cut on here. It doesn't have to be exact, but you just want to leave some room on the spring. So I'm just going in here and you can you can lay your image on top of it to see if you need to do any more cutting. You can have a little bit of that white showing. That outline is not going to show because this has paper over the adhesive. Okay. So again, if you don't have an action wobble, if your image is larger, then you don't have to do that trimming, but I'm doing it on mine. Okay. All right. So it's going to go on just like that. So I'm going to take this off, bend it here. It's got a little seam in the middle to help pulling it off. So I'm just going to lay it right on here like that. Okay. And then we're going to take the adhesive off of the back. The reason I didn't pop this up is because I don't want it to get stuck behind that flower. But you're going to figure out where you want the flower to be and where you want the bird to be. So I'm going to do it right about there. Press that down. And then I'm going to use just a little bit of the Connect glue. That's it. I love this card. I think it's so fun. So it just looks like it's just pollinating right there. So here's my two little hummingbirds. You can imagine if you had the little butterfly on here. And this one, I can color this really quickly. Do this with It makes it look even darker and more blended to just go over the whole thing. The black. So I like to go over the black stamping and it just adds just a little bit of more depth and dimension to your coloring. I mentioned also showing you another sky, so I'm going to show you one that I did with the smaller butterfly in the set and some of the caterpillars and I'll come back and do that one in another video. I want to make one using all the images. All right, so there is the red. That'll dry. Okay, so that would go on there just like that. Might use a blue just to have some contrast, but here is one that I did with what the caterpillar calls the end of the world, the master um, calls a butterfly and I've got the same flower but colored in pinks and reds and then some of the little caterpillars and then just this smaller butterfly lifting off. So I hope you're excited about this set. I have so many ideas for it and I can't wait to mix these different creatures and these different nature elements with the different butterflies, birds, ducks, um, and other animals and creatures that I have in my beautiful series. Please check out our um, Facebook Live again tonight. Like I said, we're going to have all the illustrators chatting about all the new stamp sets and with Gina, of course. It's going to be so much fun. So I look forward to talking to you tonight and having more videos with the beautiful backyard set. Thank you so much for watching today. God bless.